Now stay tuned for X-1 on NBC. After tonight's broadcast, X-1, the adult science fiction show, will not be heard until Wednesday, September 26th. It will be heard on Wednesdays thereafter. For the exact time, consult your local newspaper. And now, X-1. Countdown for blast off. X-5, 4, 3, 2, X-1, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future. Adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents... X minus one... This week, the police chiefs of the country are meeting in Chicago for the 63rd Annual Conference of the International Association of Chiefs of Police. Tonight, X-1 is proud to salute them as we present The Lifeboat Mutiny by Robert Sheckley. we should have known better. In a way, we were asking for it, but frankly, we were short of credits and beggars can't be choosers. As a rule, I don't like second-hand equipment, not if I have to trust my life to it. But Joe, the interstellar junk man, can be pretty persuasive. He has an air of confidence when he walks down between the rows of antique jalopies on his lot and pats an airlock door lovingly or kicks at the ground gyros to show how firm they are. Joe exudes the way trees drip sap in the spring. And if you get too close, a little rubs off on you. Yeah, you see? Solid as a rock. Look at that plating. I'm telling you, this boat is a real buy. Well, she looks pretty old. Sure, she's old. Uh, now, don't give us that story about it belonging to a little old lady who used it to flip to church on Sundays. All right, boys, I'm not trying to unload something on you. I don't stand to make a nickel on this, but tell me the truth. Did you ever hear sweeter engines? And look at those servos. Pretty old. And that hull. I bet it's 500 years old and not a spot of corrosion on it. I'm telling you, you're lucky. It's a coincidence you two fellas coming in, you need a lifeboat. And sitting right here waiting for you. Like you was made for each other, is this baby. Well, she certainly does seem rather nice. What do you think about it, Nick? It does look pretty good. It's about what we need for the ocean survey work on Trident. But you know, Joe. Ah, they just don't build them this way anymore. Look at that propulsion unit. You couldn't dent it with a trip hammer. And note the capacity of the cooling system. It looks good, but some of these old machines, you know, I just want to make absolutely sure it's safe. Safe? <laughs> safe, he asked me if it's safe. Is it? Now, uh, step inside. Go ahead. Step inside. All right. Push that button. Right there on the instrument panel. This one? Hey. I am lifeboat 324A. Hey, the darn thing talks. Yeah, and in English, too. <laughs> it's equipped with a universal translator. It's completely automatic. I told you, they just don't build them this way anymore. Go ahead. Push the button again. I am lifeboat 324A. My primary purpose is to preserve those within me from peril and to maintain them in good health. At present, I am only partially activated. Would anything be safer? Uh, This is no senseless hunk of metal. This boat will look after you. This boat cares. I don't know. The idea of an emotional machine always gets me. I can't even stand those robot maitre d's. 
and they keep slobbering over you every time you'd win to a restaurant with their tubes just pouring kindness and consideration. Ah, you're a reactionary. We'll take it. You won't be sorry. Boys, you just bought yourselves a lifeboat. Joe delivered this assurance in a frank and open tone that had helped make him a millionaire several times over. It wasn't that he was dishonest. Far from it. All the flotsam he collected from anywhere in the universe worked. But ancient machines often had their own idea of how a job should be done. They tend to get peevish when forced into another routine. Well, there she goes. Lifeboat 324A. I got her down in the afterhold. I think she's in perfect condition. You know, it's just what we need for those oceans on Trident. I hope so. The last thing I bought from Joe was an electric razor. Only it turned out that it came from Deneb 3, where they are slightly reptilian. And an electric razor is used to help them change their skin in the hot months. If you remember, I was in the hospital three months, and after the skin grass, I don't know my ears from my elbow. <laughs> This job we were on was to survey the planet Trident for a real estate speculator who bought it for subdivision. Trident was about the size of Mars, but with a far better climate. There was no native indigenous population, no poisonous plants, and no germ-borne diseases. As a matter of fact, apart from one small island and one small polar ice cap, the entire planet was covered with water. There was no real shortage of land. You could wade across some of the Trident's several seas. Our firm had been hired to survey and plan a little mountain raising because the sector council frowned on selling building lots under four feet of water. We landed on Trident and launched the lifeboat. Okay, I got the sandwiches in the water. Ready to cast off? Aye, aye, sir. All mooring lines are on board. All right, let's crank this swan boat up and get going. Well, push that button. <laughs> aye, aye. I am lifeboat 324A. My primary purpose is to preserve those within me from peril and to maintain them in good health. At present, I am only partially activated. For full activity, press button two. Now, there it is, right next to the first one. Well? Something's going on back there. Sounds like motor's warming up. Hey, that sounds like a short circuit somewhere. You know there's no wheel on this thing? Oh, wait a minute. There's got to be some kind of tiller or control. Well, you look. That's all there are. Two buttons. Well, then maybe she controls telepathically. I'll try it. Hey, uh, 324A, go ahead slowly. Ah, there she goes. That's it. Starboard a little. Uh, wait a minute. I still don't like the sound of that. I bet there's a short somewhere. I'm going down to look for it with a circuit tester. Don't louse anything up. I like a boat that works this way. It gives me a sense of power. Hey, 324A, full speed ahead. Arnold disappeared into the bilge with a circuit tester, and I handled the survey. Actually, our machines did all the work, tracing the major faults in the ocean bottom, locating the most promising volcanoes. And when the survey was complete, the next stage would be turned over to the subcontractor. He would wire the volcanoes, seed the faults, and touch the whole thing off. After that, there'd be enough dry land on Trident for anybody. Now, by mid-afternoon, I figured we could knock off for a while. We ate our sandwiches, took a drink of water from the canteen, and then had ourselves a swim in Trident's clear green water. Hey, give me a hand up. Yeah. That was very refreshing. Oh, yeah. I'll have to get this grease off with sandpaper, but I think I found the trouble. You see, the leads to the primary activator have been removed and the power cable's been cut. Well, why would anyone do that? Well, it might have been part of the decommissioning, but I got it hooked up now. Go ahead, hit the second button. Might as well have this thing working right. Okay, here she goes. Activated and able to pro- 
protect my occupants from danger. Have faith in me. My action response tapes, both psychological and physical, have been prepared by the best scientific minds in all drones. Ah, that's more like it, huh? Gives you a feeling of uh, confidence, doesn't it? Uh, I suppose so. Where is drone? Oh. Gentlemen, try to think of me not as an unfeeling mechanism, but as your friend and comrade in arms. I understand how you feel. You have seen your ship go down. Hmm? Cruelly riddled by the implacable Hagen. What ship? What's it talking about? You have crawled aboard me, dazed, gasping from the poisonous fumes of water. Half dead. Oh, no, wait a minute. You mean that swim we took? You got it all wrong. We were just surveying. Half dead, shocked, wounded. Morale low. You were a little frightened, perhaps. And, well, you might be. Separated from the drone fleet and adrift upon an alien planet. A little fear is nothing to be ashamed of, gentlemen. But this is war, and war is a cruel business, and we have no alternative but to drive the barbaric again across space. There must be a reasonable explanation for all this. Mm, probably an old television script got mixed up in its response bank. We better give it a complete overhaul. We can't listen to that stuff all day. Well, we're about a quarter of a mile from the island. Ah, I'll tell you what. I'll take it down and clean the goo out of the contacts when we get there. Hey. What's going on? We're stopping. Hey, hey, lifeboat. Quiet. Calm. Trust in me. I am scanning the island. What's he talking about, scanning me? Better humor. Lifeboat, uh, that, that island's okay. We, we, we checked it personally. Perhaps you did. But in modern lightning-quick warfare... Drone senses cannot be trusted. They are too limited, too prone to interpret what they wish. Electronic senses, on the other hand, are emotionless, eternally vigilant, and infallible within their limits. But there isn't anything there. I perceive a foreign spaceship on the island. Oh, that's our ship. It has no drone markings. Well, it hasn't any enemy markings either. I painted it myself. In war, we must assume that what is not ours is the enemy's. Oh. I understand your desire to set foot on land again, but I take into account factors that a drone motivated by his emotions would overlook. Consider the apparent emptiness of the strategic bit of land, the unmarked spaceship put temptingly out for bait, the fact that our fleet is no longer in this vicinity. All right, all right, that's enough. Now, I'm tired of arguing with you. Go directly to that island. That's an order. I cannot obey that order. You are unbalanced from your harrowing escape from death. All right, all right, enough of this nonsense. I'm just going to take that cut-off switch and... <laughs> Come to your senses, gentlemen. Only the decommissioning officer is empowered to turn me off. For your own safety, I must warn you, not to touch any of my controls. You are mentally unbalanced. Later, when our position is safer, I will administer to you. Now my full energies must be devoted towards detection and... Escape from the enemy. Where are we going? To rejoin the drone fleet... As soon as I can find it. We sailed over the empty seas of Trident for the rest of the afternoon and far into the night. At about midnight, we sat in the cabin sharing our last sandwich. The lifeboat was still rushing madly over the waves, its every electronic sense alert, searching for a fleet that had existed 500 years ago upon an entirely different planet. Didn't I pack more sandwiches? Mm. Did you ever hear of these drones? Yeah, vaguely. They were non-human, lizard-evolved creatures. Mm. Yeah, they lived on the sixth planet of some little system near uh, Capella. The race died out over a century ago. Mm -hmm. And the Hagen. What about them? Also lizards, same story. Mm. It wasn't a very important war, you know. All the combatants are gone except this lifeboat, apparently. And us. We've been drafted as drone soldiery. You think we can reason with this, Tom? Oh, no, I don't see how. As far as this boat is concerned, the war is still on. 
It can only interpret data in terms of that premise. It's probably listening in on us now. No, no, I don't think so. Hmm? See, it's not really a mind reader. Its perception senses are geared only to thoughts aimed specifically at it. Yes, sirree. They just don't build them this way anymore. Oh, I wish I could get my hands on Joe. Well, you know, it's actually a very interesting situation. The machine is acting very logically upon no longer existent conditions. Therefore, you could say that the machine is the, uh, well, the victim of a systematized delusion. You mean the lifeboat is just plain insane? Well, I believe paranoia would be the proper designation. Ah, but it'll, it'll end pretty soon. Why? It's obvious. The boat's prime objective is to keep us alive. Our sandwiches are gone, and the only other food is on the island. I figure it'll have to take a chance and go back. Gentlemen, at present, I am unable to locate the drone fleet. Therefore, I am turning back to scan the island again. Fortunately, there are no enemies in this immediate area, so I can devote myself to your care. Oh, you see, it's about time you got around to us. We're hungry. Feed us. Of course. Immediately. There you are. On the tray. What's that? That looks like clay. Oh, it smells like machine oil. Hey, what's it supposed to be? That is geezel. Hmm? It's the staple diet of the drone people. I can prepare it in 16 different ways. Oh. Try it. All right. Mm. It tastes like clay coated with machine oil. We can't eat that. Of course you can. An adult drone consumes five. 0.3 pounds of geezel a day and cries for more. Now listen, we are not drones. We are humans, an entirely different species. The war you think your fighting ended 500 years ago, we can't eat geezel. Our food is on the island. Ah, yes. Your delusion is a common one among fighting men. It is an escape fantasy, a retreat from an intolerable situation. Gentlemen, I beg you, face reality. You face reality or I'll have you dismantled bolt by bolt threats do not disturb me. I know what you've been through. Possibly you've suffered some brain damage from your exposure to poisonous water. Poisonous? To drones. If absolutely necessary, I am also equipped to perform physical brain therapy. It is a drastic measure, but there can be no coddling in time of war. You see, you need not worry. All my scalpels are razor sharp and ready for immediate action. Oh, <laughs> scalpels, huh? Well, we're feeling better already. That's a fine-looking batch of geezel, isn't it, Arnold? Oh, uh, uh, delicious. Nothing is too good for our boys in uniform. Mm. Do try a little. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, that's del <coughs> delicious. <coughs> mm. Good. I am moving toward the island now, and I promise you in a little while, you will be more comfortable. Why? The temperature here is unbearably hot. It is amazing you haven't gone into a coma. Any other drone would have. Soon I'll have it down to drone norm of 20 degrees below zero. And now I'll play our national anthem. <laughs> should be very comfortable. Drones live at 20 below zero. We're drones and no yeah. back talk. Those cooling tubes are all frosted up. Yeah, I just wrote my name in frost in the porthole. Hey, wait a minute. Hmm? Wait a minute. I got an idea. Just follow my lead. Why not? Lead on, fellow drone. Ah, uh, give me the campaign. What are you doing? Ah, uh, just, uh, just gonna get a little exercise. <laughs> Gotta stay fit, you know. That is true. Ah, uh, here you are, boy. Catch! Look out, that canteen's heavy. Ah, uh, just throw it right back, boy. Just heave it right in. Come on, let's see your curve. Be careful with that receptacle. It's filled with a deadly poison. Water. Oh, we'll be careful. Here we go. Bad shot, old man. Oh, how 
careless of me. I seem to have broken the cooling tubes. Cooling fluid all over the floor. I should have taken precaution against internal accidents. It won't happen again. But the situation is very serious. I cannot repair the cooling tube myself. I'm unable to properly cool the boat. Say, that's tough. Now, if you'll just drop us on the island... That is impossible. My first duty is to preserve your lives. And you couldn't live long in the climate of this planet. But I'm going to take necessary precautions to ensure your safety. What are you going to do? There is no time to waste. I will scan the island once more. If our drone forces are not present, we will go to the one place on the planet that can sustain drone life. What place? The southern polar ice cap. The climate there is almost ideal. 30 degrees below zero. And of course, I must guard against any further internal accidents. So, I will lock you gentlemen in the cabin. Think. I am thinking. Nothing's coming out. Well, we've got to get off when he reaches the island. It'll be our last chance. Now, look. We know his internal scanning isn't very good. When we reach the island, maybe we could cut his power cable. Oh, you couldn't get within five feet of it. He's got an electric charge on all the controls. I am now scanning the island. Uh, place looks fine today. Oh, sure does. I'll bet our forces are dug in underground. They are not. I scan to a depth of 100 feet. Well, uh, under the circumstances, I think we should examine it a little more carefully. It is deserted. I cannot let you endanger your lives by going ashore. Drome needs her soldiers, especially sturdy, heat-resistant types like you. We like this climate. Spoken like a patriot. I know you must be suffering. But now I am going to the South Pole to give you veterans the rest you deserve. Wait a minute. You don't understand. We're operating under special orders. We weren't supposed to disclose them to any vessel below the rank of Super Dreadnought. We're a suicide squad. Yes, yes, that's right. Especially trained for hot climate war. Our orders are to land and secure that island for the drone forces. I didn't know that. You weren't supposed to. After all, you're only a lifeboat. Land us at once. I couldn't guess, you know. All right. We'll head for the island. Arnold, it's going to work. Why not, as long as we tell him the truth? The beach is only 50 yards away. No. No. No what? I cannot do it. What do you mean? This is war. Orders. I know, but I cannot obey. A different type of vessel should have been chosen for this mission. But not a lifeboat. You must think of our country. Think of the barbaric Hagen. It is electronically impossible for me to carry out your orders. My prime directive is to protect my occupants from harm. That order is stamped on my every tape, giving priority above all others... I cannot let you go to your certain death. You'll be court-martialed for this. I'll have you broken down to a dinghy. I regret to say I must operate within my limitations. I must take you to the safety of the South Pole. Listen, you crazy tin can. Let me at those controls. I'll... Please, do not attempt any more destruction. I know how you feel, Wait a minute, but... Arnold, old friend. Since we cannot accomplish our mission, we cannot ever again face our comrades. Death before dishonor. Hand me the canteen. No. Don't. That's water. It is a deadly poison. Don't. Don't. <sighs> Too late. Arnold, it's your turn. We who are about to die salute you. We die for glorious drone. That goes for me, too. Speak to me. Speak to me. I still, you idiot. There is no known antidote. If only I could contact the hospital ship. Speak to me. Are you still alive? Answer me. 
Here. Here. Perhaps if you eat some Giesel. Dead. 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 I will now read the burial service. Great spirit of the universe, take into your custody the souls of these your servants. Although they died by their own hand, still it was in the service of their country, fighting for home and hearth. Judge them not harshly for their impious deed. Rather, blame the spirit of war that inflames and destroys the spirit of all drone. And now, by the authority vested in me, by the drone fleet, and with all reverence, I commend their bodies to the deep. Oh, shut up. Accept them, O ocean, for many brave hearts are at slumber in the deep. Float quietly. What's the lifeboat doing? It's still hanging around. Just pray the drones didn't believe in cremation. Sleep quietly, brave spirits. I will now play the drone national anthem. Well, there she goes. Where? To the South Pole. To wait for the drone fleet. You have just heard X-1 presented by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features The Man Who Ate the World by Frederick Pohl. This is the story of a civilization which flowed with milk and honey and of a man whose tragedy was that he had not drowned at birth. Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. Tonight by transcription, X-1 has brought you The Lifeboat Mutiny. A story from the pages of Galaxy written by Robert Sheckley and adapted for radio by Ernest Kenoy. Featured in the cast were Leon Janney, Mandel Kramer, William Redfield, and John McGovern. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production.